25, David and his men had been out protecting the property of a man named Nabal. He was a wealthy man that owned a lot of sheep. It was the time of year where they were shearing the sheep. They had all this wool, a great harvest. They were having a big celebration. So David sent a few men to ask Nabal, since they'd been watching over his property, if he would give them some food and water. It seemed like Nabal would be grateful, glad to do it, but he was just the opposite. He was very rude and disrespectful to David's men. Commentaries say that Nabal was a harsh man, stubborn, hot-tempered, that he spent most of his life drunk. He said to David's men, I don't owe you anything. Didn't ask you to protect me. What are you doing on my property? He sent them away empty-handed. When David heard how Nabal insulted them, he was furious. He told his men to get their swords. They were going to attack. Nabal's wife, a young lady named Abigail, was not only beautiful, but she was very wise. She loaded up animals with food and water and headed out toward David. They met on the road. Abigail bowed down in humility. She said, David, my husband is a fool. I'm sorry for how he treated you. I brought you all these gifts for you and your men. She calmed David down, kept him from wiping out her town. David thanked her, turned around, went back home. Ten days later, Nabal had a stroke and died. David sent word and asked Abigail to become his wife. Now that the old man was dead, she could meet the new man. Nabal is symbolic of our old nature. Hot-tempered, rude, ungrateful, addictions. The name Nabal even means fool. As long as the old man is alive, you'll never meet the new man. I'm not talking about your husband. Somebody thought they got a word from the Lord. I'm talking about the old man that lives in us. The bitterness, the bad attitude, the compromise. Start starving the old man. Your destiny is too great. Your assignment too important to let the same issues keep you from seeing the new man. It's interesting that Nabal died 10 days after Abigail did the right thing. There will be these times when you dig down deep and do the right thing when it's hard that you will come in to your 10th day. Something will suddenly break. That addiction won't have the power over you. That bad attitude, that temper may not totally go away, but it doesn't control you anymore. I wonder how much higher we would go, how much more of God's favor we would see if we'd start putting off the old man, if we'd start saying no to the things that are holding us back. And sometimes a little thing is keeping us from big blessings, a little pride, a little compromise, just this one friend I party with. Just this one temptation I give into, just this one person I won't forgive. No, it's time to get rid of Nabal. Nobody likes him. Nobody wants to be around him. Put the old man down and put on the new you, the free you, the blessed you, the happy you, the victorious you. In the scripture, Jacob was known for being dishonest, cheating people. His name means trickster, con man. He lived up to it tricked his brother out of his birthright, went around deceiving people. After living this way for years, he went to the brook to be alone. I'm sure he was reflecting on his life. He had an encounter with God, wrestled with the angel. It was there that God changed his name from Jacob to Israel. His new name means prince with God. His old name meant deceiver. He spent the rest of his life dealing with these two names. You would think the scripture would now refer to him only by his new name, Israel. After all, God changed his name. It was a significant moment. He had a new beginning. But the scripture goes back and forth between Jacob and Israel. One moment he's Jacob in the same passage. The next moment he's Israel. God was showing us that the old man, the carnal desires won't totally go away. The key to living in victory is to respond like Israel, not like Jacob. There's a Jacob in all of us. There are things that can hold us back. The good news is there's an Israel in all of us. There's a prince in you. There's a holy, righteous, favored world changer in you. But let me warn you, even though Israel is in there, even though God has changed your name, Jacob will try to come out. 
Those carnal desires may be dead, but people will do things that wake up the Jacob in you. You were driving to work, singing praises, enjoying the day. Israel was feeling good. Then someone cut you off in traffic. Out of nowhere, Jacob showed up. You quit praising. You started saying some other things. You think, where did you come from? Jacob smiles and says, I'm in here too. I may be dead, but I can be woken up. Jacob wants to complain. Israel wants to praise. Who's going to win that war? Jacob wants to hold a grudge and they hurt you. Don't speak to them. Israel wants to forgive. Let it go and move forward in faith. Jacob wants to argue, be condescending, say hurtful things. Israel wants to be kind, overlook the offense, keep peace in the relationship. Jacob wants another Krispy Kreme donut with chocolate icing, sprinkles on top. Israel says, no, 12 was enough. I'm asking you to be the Israel, not the Jacob. They're both in us. God changed your name, but he didn't get rid of Jacob. When Jacob was about to pass, came to the end of his life. Genesis 48 says, when Jacob was told that his son Joseph was there to see him, Israel gathered up his strength and sat up in the bed. He started off as Jacob, tired, weary, thinking he was done, but then something kicked in. He thought, my son is here. The one I thought was dead, the one I waited for, I'm not gonna die yet. Israel sat up in the bed. The prince in him came back to life. When you wake up in the morning, you get to choose. Am I going to be Jacob today? Am I gonna complain? I don't wanna to go to work. I can't stand this traffic. These people get on my nerves. Or are you going to be Israel? Lord, thank you for another day that you have made. I'm grateful to be alive. Thank you for the gift of this day. When things don't go your way, you have delays, disappointments, people that do you wrong. Are you gonna be Jacob? Get upset, offended, try to pay them back. Or are you gonna be Israel? Father, you're my vindicator. You're on the throne. I'm gonna stay in peace knowing that you're fighting my battles. With your family, are you gonna be Jacob? Critical, harsh, contentious? Or are you gonna be Israel? Loving, kind, treating them with respect and honor? Both people are in you, the flesh and the spirit, the old man and the new man, Jacob and Israel. You'll go so much further in life if you'll start being Israel. Keep the flesh off the throne. Don't let that old man get back up. Keep him buried. I was at the drive-thru the other day, just minding my own business. Life was good. I'd waited about 10 minutes in line. I pulled up to place my order on the microphone. The people were in the building. I rolled down my window and the man was so upset. He said, sir, there are other people waiting. If you don't place your order, you're gonna have to get out of the line. I had just pulled up. I had not been there for two seconds. Out of nowhere, Jacob showed up. I was so surprised. I said, how'd you get here so fast? He said, I live here too. He gave me some great ideas what to tell this jerk. I mean, this man. I said, Jacob, I thought you were dead. He said, I was, but I got back up for this one. Now I had to make the choice. Was I going to be Israel, the pastor with a smile? Or was I going to be Jacob and try to get even? I did what I'm asking you to do. I thought I'm going to be Israel. I said very politely, well, no problem. Let me give you my order. After I ordered, I thanked him. Said, God bless you. Have a great day. Hope your children are fine. Tell your grandparents I said hello. When I pulled up, he had all of his workers gathered around staring at me. He said, I thought that was you, Pastor Joel. <laughs> I wanted to say, yes, this is me, Israel. <laughs> Every day you have to make the choice. Am I Jacob or am I Israel? Am I going to hold on to this offense or am I going to let it go? Am I going to hang out with these friends that caused me to compromise? Or am I going to stay on the high road and be a person of excellence? Am I going to cut corners at work? Or am I going to have integrity and give it my best? I'm asking you to be an Israel. Put off the old man. Don't let the flesh dictate your life. Let the spirit rule. Honor God with your decisions. The choices you make don't just affect you, they affect your children and even generations to come. 
Jacob's brother Esau, he sold his birthright for a pot of stew. He was so hungry, he let his carnal desires dictate his decisions. He sold something incredibly valuable for a bowl of stew. He was the firstborn son. We should talk about the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Esau, not Jacob. But Esau let his flesh take the throne. Don't let that be you. You can win the war within. God is calling you up higher. Whatever you know is holding you back. This is the time to make a change. This is a moment of grace to do what you couldn't do before. Your decision can save your marriage, can take you to a new level in your career. It can break mediocrity and launch you into abundance. If you'll do this, I believe and declare, like Israel, you're going to become the prince you were created to be. You're going to break bad habits, resist temptation, and see the fullness of your destiny in Jesus.